Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. Well, today we look at the Druid as a character class. Now, the Druid is a character class that I must say has been on a similar journey to the Paladin whereby they started off as this alignment-based individual who had major difficulties in terms of integrating with a party, and they've now evolved and changed into their current state, where they're just another class that can be played that has a different kind of flavor. So the druids initially started off as being true neutral. They weren't allowed to be good or evil. They were representing nature, and nature is neutral by its nature. So druids were supposed to be nature be um, neutral and not necessarily to participate in, necess in conflicts that tipped the balance between good and evil, between light and dark. That posed a lot of interesting role-playing challenges back in the day. I remember one of my first characters that I played was a druid and I found it very difficult to reconcile my druid's actions with the rest of the party. I was true neutral, they were chaotic good, or they were doing this and that, and sometimes their actions would go against nature. Then I'd have to step in and wag my Greenpeace uh, finger at them and try and change the course of their decision. So let's talk about the Druid, because modern day Druids are very different from my day. So the merits of a Druid, they are, in one word, adaptable. Of all the classes that are out there, forget paladins, because paladins are kind of like clerics. Forget clerics who are kind of like warriors. Forget mages who can be all sorts of different things. The druid is the most adaptable class that you can get in Dungeons and & Dragons. The reason why I say that is because they have the ability to cast magic, they have the ability to heal, they have the ability to tank, they have the ability to survive in almost any kind of environment, they've got skills that they can use, they can transform into different creatures and get out of situations that almost no other class can do. So the druid is adaptable and is a survivor. A druid will be able to walk out of most situations that almost all other classes have a really tough time getting out of. So that's a very strong class to start as your base. I'm going to play something that's going to survive and that's going to adapt and that can effectively function on their own. They can do everything that almost every other class can do. They can as well. Can do. Can. Can. Perhaps they can also can can. Who knows? The negatives of a druid, however, is because they're not a specialist, because they can tank, they can heal, they can engage in combat, they can track, they can survive, they can do all sorts of weird, wonderful things. They're not a specialist, so sometimes they lack focus. Well, what are you actually? Actually, what are you actually? I'm a bit of both, of, all, of everything actually. I'm neither this nor that. So they, they can lack focus and become a fairly bland character who's just got, well, the powers that everybody else has got. So, well, we'll let them solve it type of thing. So they can lack focus. They can also become a loner class. So like the rogue who generally operates better on their own, a druid, when they're in the shape of a mouse, can run off and do things that the rest of the party simply cannot do. The druid can turn into a bird at higher levels and fly somewhere. The rest of the party is landlocked unless they've got weird and wonderful magics, but is generally landlocked. So the druid can become a loner. Oh, my part of this adventure is where I go off on my own and do all of the cool stuff that, well, you guys just can't do. I'm sorry. Yes, the mage can turn invisible. Uh, the thief can sneak. But nothing quite beats a cockroach-formed druid. No one is going to pay that any attention. I don't care what you say. So the druid can become a loner. Now, you can also find it fairly difficult to make the druid unique. And you'll see later on when I talk about the different types of druid, I really had to scratch my head to come up with ways in which druids could be unique. There are a few ways of doing it that I've come across, and I'm sure you know of many more, but generally speaking, druids kind of get tarred with the same brush, and because they can do everything to, and be everything to everyone, they can just become very wishy-washy. 
There's no specialist focus that differentiates one type of druid from another necessarily. Of course, with role playing and with personality and with character, you can do it. But as a class itself, it doesn't offer much differentiation. So what are the potentials then? What are the potentials for a druid who can do almost everything? Well, of course, there is the traditional link that druids have to the land. They're supposed to care for the land. So that allows the druids to invest in different areas. This is their area. This is where they grew up. This is the forest that they played in. So it gives them the potential to have quite a strong backstory with a specific type of terrain. Now, that will help in terms of differentiating your druid from other druids. But you as the player, you have to bring that to the fore. You have to make sure that people are aware of that. You are, of course, a very strong support class. So your potentials there are helping your allies. You're not going to necessarily be dealing the most damage. You're not going to be taking the most damage, although in some cases you possibly could be. However, you are a support class. So that is a good space for you to play in and to be in if you are a druid. Druids could be leaders, but on the other hand, they are more suited to being in the middle of, of combat, but keeping an eye out for all of the opportunities and advantages that they could give to their other players because of their wide variety of skills and powers that they have available. Now, the other potential for the Druid is that you can play the Druid as a almost fish-out-of-water explorer. I've got one game running currently in Tokyo where I have a character, who, a player who's playing a Druid who was a hermit and who lived in the great northern forests um, on the world of Braxia that I created. Sorry, I'm looking at the map that's on my right here. Um, so he is playing this hermit and he has no social skills whatsoever. Every time there's a social situation, in this case a grieving mother who's about to become a widow, he has very little tact. It's endearing, and it, uh, endearing, not enduring, it's endearing. If anything, it's going to cause him to not endure too much when he says the wrong thing at the wrong time and gets his lights punched out. It's endearing to the rest of the players to have this druid who just says the wrong thing at the wrong time. That starts to give the druid a sense of the fact that he's very at home when he's in nature, he's very at home with all of the natural stuff, but that whole interrelationship stuff is not so good. What he also throws in, which I particularly like, is that he transforms social structures and social relationships into very animalistic terms. He talks about, oh, are you the alpha of your tribe? Are you the... Uh, are you the bitch of the tribe? Are you the this? Are you the that? Etc. Etc. So he transforms things into a natural. And that's a fantastic way of taking the potential of the druid and really, really coming to terms with it and making it come alive for the rest of the party, for the rest of the players around the table. So what are the different types of druid that you get then? This is where I had a lot to think about. You obviously have your traditional druid. Now, within the modern-day context of Dungeons & Dragons, you've got moon druids and circle druids and all that. They're still druids. They're still traditional druids. Shape-shifting, kind of moonbeam-casting, hide-wearing, cudgel-wielding, shillelagh-controlling uh, kind of druid. That's your traditional druid. That's not a bad way to go. That is the most generic type of druid that you can have, and so as a result, you suffer from the risks of being a generic cutout wizard, of being a uh, wizard druid, of being bland, and uh, that's not necessarily a good thing. In D&D 2nd Edition, they released the Druid Handbook, which released a whole lot of kits, they used to call them. I think nowadays we would call them um, focuses or... or um, I've completely gone blank. Archetypes, um, we, would, we would call them that. These were druids who were specific to different types of terrain. So you had the insect druid, who was a druid who dealt with insects and spiders and that sort of thing. You had the traditional forest druid. You had the urban druid, who was focused on urban areas, the wildlife that goes on in and around those urban areas. And if you one inspiration, there is a modern-day druid who runs around, David Attenborough, and he has done all of the different terrain types, and you could be a druid from any one of those. So an aquatic druid, a mountain druid, a plains druid, a forest druid, a jungle druid, all of those were 
highlighted in that second edition uh, expansion book and I think could be brought back to creating some very cool ideas around specific terrain druids. The one that I always like is the herbalist druid. This is Getafix from Asterix and Obelix where the druid goes out into the forest and he understands everything and he mixes potions together uh, using natural ingredients to call nature and bring the power of nature to those that need it most. Now, the herbalist druid is one that becomes a bit of a doctor. And if you watch uh, Bacon Battalion RP or Bacon RPG, sorry, my words all over my all over the place today. If you watch Bacon RPG, the sister channel, you'll see there that we have uh, Jonathan, who's playing Con, the druid, and Con is the doctor of the Windswift ship itself, and he uses his druidic powers principally to transform into beasts during combat, but also to act as the medica the medica the surgeon the doctor aboard the vessel and that's giving his character quite a lot of flavor differentiating them from say a cleric who would be your traditional healer or from a paladin who does healing and of course the rpg also includes a paladin who does a lot of healing thankfully because the party takes quite a lot of damage now another type of druid that you could be is the warden this is the individual who has been tasked with not protecting a specific area because then that prevents your character from ever leaving but this is the character who's been tasked with protecting nature rangers inhabit nature and use nature to their advantage druids are there to protect nature so the warden is the one who makes sure that the party doesn't violate the laws of nature do not interfere in the hunt between a lion and a gazelle. Do not chop down more trees than you need to survive. Do not slay creatures that are in their natural environment and you are the interloper. So the warden becomes a very good guide for the party. They advise them on the best ways to navigate through natural environments or urban environments if you're an urban warden. I'm not sure. An urban warden really is an estate agent. They're trying to keep the, 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 the area good. <laughs> so, and a, a warden is there to make sure the party does the right thing in the natural environment. And that can be a very interesting role to play. Now a game hunter. This is a very contentious issue all around the world and particularly in South Africa where hunting is a very large income generator. Of course the fact that we have so many wildlife types, different types of animals and things, attracts a lot of hunters from all over the world. A game hunting druid is a druid who recognizes that because of the influence of elves and dwarves and humans and orcs and all those kinds of wonderful creatures, nature is an imbalance and certain predators are thriving whereas certain others are not certain large animals are destroying terrain where they would normally have been kept in check by the predators but the predators have been taken out by the humans and because of agriculture the humans don't hunt as much as they used to so there's an imbalance this game hunter is the druid who specializes in taking out specific animals and has focused themselves on that now that makes him a little bit more of a warden, however, that game hunter could also quite easily turn into a bounty hunter who hunts down people who have a particular grudge or do a defilement of nature. That gives them a very interesting edge and certainly allows them to focus skills that might be more useful to a party than just someone who runs around telling them what to do. Another option for the druid is the savage. This is the druid who has not had much contact with other people, uh, with other intelligent people, and who spends most of their time in animal form. The wild child, if you like. They can be a lot of fun to play as they curiously take on civilization and look at exactly what it brings and what it offers and rejects it or embraces it depending. The savage or the wild child will focus more on dealing with animals, speak with plants, speak with animals, all those kinds of spells and things, and will make it their mission to show just how wonderful nature can be and how they can survive out in the wild by using their wits and their animalistic nature. So those are the six different types that I came up with. I don't know if there's more. I think there probably is. Leave your comments below on other types of druids that you've played so that we can read that and learn and share and grow together. So what stories then will precipitate around the Druid? What, what can you look forward to? What can you expect? What can you hope to achieve? Well, obviously, defense of nature is the very first one that comes to, to, to mind. When nature is in trouble, the Druid is there to help. 
This doesn't necessarily make them green peace, but they should certainly be very vocal when they see something going wrong. And if you can cling on to that, if you see that the orcs are chopping down trees en masse to build their siege engines, that's a good hook for you to get your teeth in as to why your druid will want to engage with those orcs and stop them from doing that. So that brings us to another type of story, which is the conflict between progress and nature. The more you can encourage, the more you can drive the idea that there should be a balance, the better. And if your counsel is always towards that, if your counsel is always towards finding that kind of balance, that creates a very interesting character. Animal stories, of course, are going to be something that the druid should not shy away from. If there is an animal in distress, if there is a threatened species, this is where the druid really should step forward and say, listen, we have to do everything in our power to correct this because it's wrong. That's very important. That's a very important component. And, of course, the discovery of civilization. The druid who wanders into a city and marvels at what is available or rejects what is available. Those stories are, are going to come up, and they're ones that you can play to if you're aware that they are going to happen. Well, that's my take on the druid. Now, there are a few classes left. They're getting more and more specific as we work our way down the line. If you want me to continue this very long series now where we're unpacking all of the different classes, let me know in the comments below. There have been calls for Warlock to come up. I know that one. Witch as well. Uh, and there might be some others which you may want me to handle specifically. Of course, there's also the request for us to step outside of fantasy and to start looking at things like fighter, pilot, Jedi smuggler those kinds of things and we can do that too this is after all a channel about helping you to improve your game and about me giving you my ideas on how you can do that so let me know what you want coming up next on the channel and uh, we can take it from there leave those comments below hit the like button of course if you liked what i said about druids and if you agree and if you didn't agree hit the dislike button let me know this is what this channel is all about of course, if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button to keep our numbers growing. It always helps uh, us to um, see that kind of support. And share us with your friends if you think that this video is worth looking at. If you've got a player who likes to play druids, let them watch the video and see what they say. You might gain a different insight from the one that I have given. So until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of playing.